Welcome back. Canadian Western Bank, of course, is an Edmonton-based lender. For some time now, it has been expanding its presence into eastern Canada. And just last night, it opened a new location in Toronto's financial district, right in the core of the financial district. We're joined now by the CEO of the company. He's Chris Fowler. CEO of Canadian Western Bank. Thank you so much for coming in. Oh, great to go. great to be here, Paul. So this uh, uh, plan to shift somewhat eastward has been in place for about ten years or so. So it's not brand new, but you're really uh, stepping up the strategy. Uh, tell us a bit about this new location right in the in the core of the uh, financial district in, in Toronto and why. Well, absolutely. So about. Just over 10 years ago, we expanded into Ontario through some acquisitions, and we did some more in 2016 on the commercial banking space. We did a wealth acquisition in 2020, TE Wealth and Leon Fraser. Um, and we're, what we've been able to do is consolidate those offices in the financial sector right downtown. So really looking forward to increasing our banking center presence in the GTA. We opened uh, 2020 in Mississauga. That was our first sort of entry with a banking center in, uh, in Toronto. Markham in 2022. So financial district uh, in um, Grand opening was yesterday. So we just opened in the fall. So very, you know, really looking forward to expanding our presence with that full service opportunity for the business owner client. That being our core client that we're focused on. And our fourth location we're looking for is in uh, Kitchener, which will be late spring, early summer. And again, if we think about the size of the market in Ontario and particularly GTA and as we move, you know, further west, it's significant. You know, it's as big as all of Western Canada. So the economic opportunity for us is tremendous. Business owners are our core target market. And, you know, we really can provide a different experience for them dealing with banks. And that's what has been our success in the West. And we're bringing that into what, uh, what into do you like about the individual locations? The uh, t Toronto's financial district might be self-evident, but what do yeah. you like about Mississauga, Markham, and Kitchener? Concentration of business owner clients. That's what we like. Of course, you test your market, you look and see who the addressable market is in each location, and what difference we can make for them. And that's really what we focused on: ensuring that we have that opportunity to really make a difference for the, the local business owner clients. Okay, Colin's got a question as well. Go ahead. Uh, I do. So we, one of the themes we've had on the program this morning is U.S. banks are about to start reporting earnings. So we have right. the big banks this week and the regional banks next week. Yeah. And so one of the things I wanted, I, it's a two-part question. First of all, how are you finding the, the environment for banking in, in Canada right now? And perhaps you could tell us a little bit about the differences between banking in Canada versus banking in the United States. Well, the environment, we reported, of course, in December for our Q4 results, which is October 31st. We had a very strong third and fourth quarter as, you know, we've had that very fast interest rate increase that occurred in 22, 23. And, you know, as you look at your balance sheet and you look at your asset repricing, your deposit costs, that all came together with an improvement in NIM for us in the second half of the year. So we had, you know, very strong earnings. So very happy with that. Um, you know, if we think about... Uh, the U.S., you know, clearly there are some challenges there in 2023 with the regional banks in particular. And uh, what they're obviously looking at is how do they create the regulatory environment that uh, puts kind of a, a playing field for the banks down there. And I think it's caused a bit of disruption in the states. In Canada, we have our playing fields pretty level. You know, so the way that the impact down there did not occur here because we already were set for that type of issue. But, um, you know, looking forward, you know, in we focus just in Canada, the domestic market. Our growth is moving to Ontario. We're not looking to move to the States. We see lots of growth opportunity here. What does CWB offer clients or potential clients that they can't get elsewhere in Canadian banking? It's kind of that differentiated service. You know, we really do focus on the business owner, look to provide really proactive understanding what their requirements are, looking for that integrated financial solution where we can make a difference, spend time with the client, you know, not wait for, you know, if you're a client waiting for the bank to call you, we want to call the client and say, these are the options, these are the ways we can make a difference. And that's really what has allowed us to grow at the rate we have over the years. What about for uh, shareholders and investors? Uh, is your expansion uh, into Ontario uh, meaningful from an earnings per share point of view, an earnings per share accretion point of view? Absolutely. It, it's, if you think about the Canadian market, the size of Ontario, and you look at Again, just that addressable market so large. The 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 number that I, that we're talking about is 
in the GTA area, 450,000 uh, SME type businesses. So as you think about just creating scale, the opportunity, the access to the clients, and that is what the opportunity is. So from a growth perspective, um, we've had uh, our five-year CAGR in Ontario is 11%. So really very positive. And we had 10% growth in Ontario last year, so double-digit growth. So we see that roadmap being very, very positive for investors, positive for clients, and then, you know, obviously clearly uh, looking for great staff in uh, Ontario as well. What does the expansion mean to, uh, to your spending, to your, to your costs? Well, we're always focused on costs. We've uh, typically run uh, one of the, the lower efficiency ratios of the banks, which is, of course, the goal is the, the lower the number, the better. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and our focus is to really look at expense management tied into revenue. So as revenue growth comes, we, you know, we don't want to get expenses in front of revenues. So being very tied into ensuring the revenues you know, match how we think about revenue and, or growth opportunities on the revenue side. Yeah, are you involved in the uh, Ontario mortgage market? Do you do you uh, provide more residential mortgages? We do. Yes, we've uh, we we have broker source, um, and of course we've just opened the banking center, so we will have banking center ones. So on the broker source, that's uh, the, the sort of a shorter duration book. So we've actually seen with increasing interest rates, we've had about over eighty percent of the mortgages renew in the, since rates started going up, and not really seen any change in credit quality. So pretty happy with that. And uh, how are you feeling right now about the uh, the Canadian economy? We're into a new year. What is kind of your, your outlook for this year and um, and also for uh, interest rates as well? Well, you know, the, the whole interest rate story would be interesting given the, the your breaking news this morning with mm -hmm. the U.S., uh, you know, the U.S. inflation print. Uh, you know, clearly is, in December there was a view that there was going to be a quite a number of interest rate uh, reductions as we came to the year. We kind of came to the year thinking that pretty stable the first half with drops in the second half. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Like, it, I think it's going to be very data dependent. And I think clearly we've got some more data today. So we'll see where that goes. But so our, our view is that, you know, we've come out of 20, 22, 23 with a pretty benign credit environment and uh, looking into 20. 425 and thinking that you know potentially with these higher rates some impact and we've been below our historical PC uh, provision for credit loss yeah. and uh, we normally be in the 18 to 23 basis points which is low anyway we've got a secured portfolio mm -hmm. is the approach we take for lending so always had very low losses but we expect to kind of move back to sort of that historical norms of 18 to 23 basis points mm -hmm. so we're you know viewing it as you know we're thinking sort of that soft landing, but, you know, changes do occur, and we want to be ready 